It's game time on the Razorback Sports Network from IMG. Alongside Keith Jackson, here's the voice of the Razorbacks, Chuck Barrett. Frank Broyles once famously said, people remember what you do in November. Chuck Barrett is arguably the most famous broadcaster in the state of Arkansas, but many of his fans have never seen his face. P.J. Dozier back in for the Gamecocks, handles it out front, drives to the basket, lays it up with a left hand, no good. A lot of contact underneath. They're going to say it's off Arkansas. Stays with Carolina. Eric Cobb went in there like a truck. This to make it a 35 to 31 ball game. Good snap, good hold. The kick splits the uprights, and Arkansas. Barrett does the play-by-play -play radio broadcasts for the Arkansas Razorbacks football and basketball teams, giving him the title Voice of the Razorbacks. Barrett's broadcasting career began in Clarksville, Arkansas at 16, after the local Little League announcer failed to show up for work. And so the guy that normally did it one night wasn't there, and there wasn't anybody to do it. And so uh, I'd been lying in the fields, and I was going to umpire some games that uh, that night, but uh, got a guy to fill in with me up in games and um, got up there and did it. And I just kind of knew. And I'd always listen to the Cardinals play on the radio. I'd always listen to Jack Buck, uh, who's the Hall of Fame announcer, do the Cardinals games when I was a kid. And so I basically just kind of copied everything I'd heard him do over the years. And uh, I think I knew that night, you know, what, I, what I'd probably end up doing. In 1995, a door finally opened for Barrett when he got the opportunity to call a Razorback sport that was growing in popularity, baseball. A friend of mine called me up. He worked here in Fayetteville for uh, what was then known as Demery Media. And uh, he said, the guy that's done Razorback baseball games uh, is leaving. And uh, thought you might want to know that. Barrett quickly became one of the prominent broadcasters for the Razorback Sports Network. Brady stands in from the left side. Vanek's going to work from the stretch with the bases loaded. The pitch is coming. Swing and a fly ball to left field. Hit pretty well. Going back is Napolitan. That ball's gone. That's a grand slam home run. Brady Toots just hit a grand slam home run. And the Razorbacks have taken the lead. Oh, my goodness. Brady Toots just hit a grand slam home run. 
Hoyt Purvis, a professor at the University of Arkansas and lifelong Razorback fan, wrote the book Voices of the Razorbacks, an in-depth look at the history of the Razorback Sports Network and its previous broadcasters. The real beginning of the Razorback uh, Sports Network and, and Razorback radio coverage is probably when Bob Shane, who was the really the first sports publicity director for the university, Bob uh, in 1951, at the encouragement or with the encouragement of athletic director John Barnhill, uh, he made a, a trip around the state visiting most of the radio stations in all corners of the state and created uh, the, the Razorback Network beginning in 1951. And it caught on immediately and, and it really did a lot to help build interest in, in Razorback sports. And then Bud Campbell uh, came in and uh, started doing Razorback games and was very, very popular. Uh, also began the coaches shows, which became a kind of a tradition. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he died in an automobile accident uh, in 1974. And then Paul Eels came in beginning in the late 1970s. And Paul uh, really developed a, a close relationship with the people of Arkansas. I, I suspect that 90% of the people in Arkansas knew who Paul Eels was. Everybody's doing the ball call. The 10, the 5, touchdown Arkansas. He was a really beloved figure, uh, and he, he was somebody who was very approachable, very personable, easy to talk to, and a great announcer. Do the ball call. Touchdown Arkansas. I don't know whether he made it. Touchdown Arkansas. Oh, my. The Hogs hit the signal, and by the hair of the chinny chin chin. The voice of the Razorbacks, Paul Eels, was killed last night in a car accident on I-40. He had just played in the Houston Net Golf Tournament in Fayetteville and was headed home to Little Rock. Uh, when Jack Buck, who many in Arkansas remembers this great voice of the Cardinals, when he died, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, the next morning the headline says, a city loses its soul. I believe in Arkansas, we've lost a little bit of our soul. How do you describe a man like that? It's hard to imagine life without him, Neely. In 2007, following the death of Paul Eels, Barrett was named the new voice of the Razorbacks, a promotion he did not take lightly. It's important to the people of our state, and I understand that. And I think that's, that's, that's one of the things that I do understand very, very well. Um, I grew up in an era when every game was not on television. And uh, um, there were lots of nights, football and basketball season, when the radio was your window to the Razorbacks. And uh, I know there are a lot of them out there still. Um, I think about people like my grandmother, who uh, uh, in her latter years, she listened to one station on the radio because she couldn't get up and change it. And um, I think about the little old ladies and the little old men who listen to the ball games because that's what they've always done. That stuff's important. It's part of our heritage. It's part of who we are. Um, and I think it's important. I think it goes way beyond football. It goes way beyond broadcast. Uh, it's part of our fiber as our Kansans. And I think that's important and I think it's worth preserving. Barrett became the first triple threat broadcaster in the history of Razorback sports, doing play-by-play -play for football, basketball, and baseball until 2011. For all of his football broadcasts, Barrett works with a team including former NFL player and color commentator Keith Jackson. Chuck's been delightful to work with. The whole time I've been here, he's been here in different capacities. And he's always been very professional. Uh, he's always been very prepared. He's always uh, so knowledgeable about every situation that it makes it so easy for me as a color analyst to be able to do my part of the game. Reed comes wide right. Collins the lone setback. Hogs load up on the left side. Two tight ends in the ball game. They'll fake it that way. Now Allen rolls right, naked bootleg, has Sprinkle wide open at the 40 to midfield. Inside UT Martin territory, they'll run him out of bounds in front of the Razorback bench at the 38-yard line. 37 yards on the play, well executed, Executed play, unbelievable play, but not only that, when you see Sprinkle gets the ball in his hand, it almost looks like he's jogging, but he's moving so fast, just long strides. He can really run, and that's a big body in open field. He is a weapon. Sprinkle with his 12th catch of the year, 6'6", 255 pounds, junior out of Whitehall. 
start talking about guys who understand the importance of the moment, you talk about D.T. Watts, but also you talk about Taiwan Johnson. He wasn't satisfied with falling on the football. He's picking it up and trying to go score. That's the mentality of this defense in, in Razorback period. They're trying to win football games. Barrett's key to a successful broadcast is a surprisingly simple one. It starts with preparation. Preparation is the most important thing. When you get to the point where you enjoy preparing as much, if not more, than you enjoy the actual broadcast, that's when you got a chance to be good. Chuck is a professional. He wants the great broadcast. He wants the, the sound of the crowd and all that. You know I have a problem with the windows being taken out, especially in the cold. I do not like cold weather, and i tell you one thing, that's what me and Chuck argue about. Hey, man, how many windows y'all taking out? Every one of them. I'm talking we said two. <laughs> you have to prepare because when that microphone's live, you can be made to look like an idiot real quickly. And there's no taking it back. There's no taking it back. There's no do over when it's live. There's no saying, let's do that again. When live on the air, stats manager Rick Schaefer has come up with a unique way of giving information to Barrett without interrupting the broadcast. The viewers can't see you when you're on radio, and so what you're doing is, is you're giving him information as fast as you possibly can so that he doesn't have to think. Now, God's given me a good mind with numbers, and, uh, but if you're talking about things, it's not easy to know that a play gained 34 yards. All you know is who threw it, who caught it, where it is, how the tackle's made. So he needs, that's what I, you know, if it's over 10, give him 34 real quick, and he's got that, um, and he can say that was a 34-yard gain. If it's less than 10, if you're talking about the gyrations, well, then it's 9, or it's 8, or it's 7, or it's 1. And uh, you give him that as fast as you can. Morgan's in motion out on the right side. Out of the eye, they fake a draw. Allen's going to throw, steps up. Now he looks to run. Brandon will keep it down inside the 30, get to the 29-yard line. He'll get six, the tackle made by Ryan Brown. A minute 21 to play in the half and the Hogs have stopped the clock. Allen from the gun gets the snap, rushes on the way, fires it to the sideline, complete to Morgan at the 13. Drew dives for the 10. They force him out of bounds there, shy of the first down. Kevon Coleman there to make the tackle. They give him close to the nine yard line, so it's gonna be third down and about a yard and a half with 58 seconds to play in the first half. B.A. gets the snap, throws short, incomplete. Oh. Intended for Hunter Henry at the 35. He'd have been well shy of the first down anyway. And comes down to one play. You gotta get 25 yards on one play or this football game's over. The hardest stat ever in my entire 40 years of doing Razorback athletics was the play at Ole Miss. On November 7th, 2015, in Oxford, Mississippi, the Razorbacks were down 45 to 52 against the Old Miss Rebels in double overtime. What happened next will go down as one of the greatest moments in Razorback sports history. And so that was a very confusing play. I thought Chuck described it just outstanding. Yeah, I was gonna give him some heat. He kind of doubted us uh, for a moment. It sounded like he got a little more excited as the play went on. I'm 87. Fourth down at 25. Razorbacks at the 40 in overtime. Ole Miss gonna rush three, drop eight. Allen gets the snap. Got all kinds of time. I actually look down and say, okay, that's it. I'm starting to fold up my stuff. And Chuck Barrett starts just still talking. So I'm in my ear, I'm going, what? And I look back up. He's gonna fire to the sideline, complete to Henry, but Hunter well shy of the first down. He's gonna lateral it back. Ball's on the ground, picked up by Collins. Alex has got room at the 30, 25, 20. Collins at the 15, cuts back at the 10. This game's still alive, and the Hawks have a first down. Hunter Henry lateraled it back over his head, Keith, and we're still playing football. Wow. They're gonna review it, I'm sure. I've gone back 
and seen the replay and heard the television commentators, they were thoroughly confused. They didn't even know what was happening. Chuck knew everything that was happening. He described it to a T, and uh, Arkansas gets the first down and ends up winning the game. They bring Morgan in motion again. Brandon gets the snap. He's going to keep the football into the end zone. Arkansas yeah. wins. The Razorbacks win. The Razorbacks have won the football game. After 12 weeks of football broadcasts, Barrett completely switches his focus to the 32 basketball games for the season. He has turned into a totally different individual. And so people just think to do the same job. As a play-by-play -play guy for football, you say, here's, this, what, here's what's happening. You step out of the way real quick so the color analyst can come in and he can make some comment. Then you got to get ready to set the next play. Heel on second down and nine, gets the snap. Quick slant over the middle, in and out of the hands of Rod Wright. Defended well by Ryan Pulley. We talked about him in the pregame. Freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida. Getting his first start today with DJ Dean out with turf toe. Boy, that turf toe can be... He can take you down. Ryan Pulley, boy, it's good to see him in there. You can play some football. 210 pounds. I'm just waiting to see a running back run that way and see lay, lay the wood on somebody. Third down and nine. In basketball, it's constantly moving. So he has to keep going. It is a different beast, that's to say. Chuck, of course, the thing that blows me away about his job is the ability to um, recognize what's going on, being able to translate who's doing it, um, and then being able to tell the audience what's going on and when I see that whole thing come together, uh, it just absolutely amazes me and gives me a newfound respect for what he does. 12.30 to play in the first half. Thornwell driving the paint, lofts it over Kawasi and gets it to fall off the glass. Carolina regains the lead on the bucket by Thornwell. Tough shot by Thornwell, aiming a euro off the opposite leg and get the ball to go in off of the backboard. 12.13 to play in the first half. Hogs with a one-point lead. Carolina going zone now, Scotty. Carolina in a 3-2 zone, trying to force the Razorbacks to shoot jump shots, recognizing the fact that Athlon Bell nor Athlon Bell nor Dusty Hannes are on the floor. Five to shoot, Beard right wing, Anton for three, no good. Rebound batted away by Kawasi, but picked up by Thornwell. Into the front court come the Gamecocks. They've got a one-point lead, 11.45 to play in the first half. Thornwell gives it to Cobb at the top of the circle. Right side notice, they bounce it low to Kaichinus. He steps back, got away with a travel. He dragged his pivot foot. They lob it low. They still can't get a shot away. Ten to shoot. Good defense by the Razorbacks. Carolina out of sync. Notice going to try a deep three. Too long, no good. Kaichinus over the back. Kaichinus called for the foul. He went over the back, going into the timeout. And the Razorbacks playing some solid defense, and they're going to be at the free throw line. It'll be a one and one after the break. While Barrett's style may change between football and basketball, one thing remains the same for every broadcast. The most difficult part of the game day broadcast to me is the post-game interview with the head coach. Back on the Sonic post-game show as South Carolina knocks off the Razorbacks on senior day, 76 to 61. Our post-game conversation with Mike Anderson brought to you by Sonic. And Coach, I know you're disappointed. Oh, man, I'll tell you I know what, you're disappointed. You don't know how disappointed I am. And, and more so. I've heard coaches say it's a difficult thing for them to do after the game because you're so into what you've just been doing, and then you're being asked to process it into some kind of summation in the course of about five minutes, and it's just really hard to do. One thing that I love about Chuck is he makes my job really easy. Um, it's always easy to interview after a win, but after a loss, sometimes it gets a little difficult. And, Unfortunately, my first couple of years, we had too many of those, and he always made the situation very manageable. You know, there's coaching decisions that are going to be made in, in the spur of the moment, and, and uh, I think he's always been great about respecting uh, a coach and what he believes in and gives him a chance to explain why he did a certain thing or why we took a certain course of action. Um, and he tries to minimize the amount of uncomfortable uh, atmosphere there could be. He didn't pick it apart our defense here and there. I thought our guys responded good. Uh, very, very well coached. He's been there nine years. You can tell why he's a, uh, a coach that puts a lot of emphasis on the fundamentals, fun game to prepare for, and really hope them and wish them all the best as they uh, make a run for their conference title. Hey, I got to ask you about Alex's run. We're going to play it here in just a little bit. Uh, he was uh, he was chugging to get free there at the end, wasn't he? <laughs> he was probably regretting that last biscuit this morning. <laughs> but he, he uh, you know, he has that ability. He can run over some people. He can run away from some people. And uh, fun to see him get that breakaway run. All right, Coach. Thanks so much. Thank you. We're Brett Bielema joining us outside the Razorback locker room. Hogs win big on homecoming, and we'll continue on the Sonic postgame show after this for the University of Arkansas Online.
After over 20 years with the Razorback Sports Network, Barrett does not see his time as the voice of the Razorbacks ending anytime soon. In fact, he's never taken a day off. Uh, I'll put it this way, I don't ever plan on retiring. Um, I, I'm 52 and if, you know, if my health allows and I'm blessed, I, I mean, I'll work till I can't. I don't envision myself doing anything else. And if you were to ask me, would you be completely satisfied if this were your last job and you were able to do it until you're 75, I'd say absolutely. Sign me up. Dusty's on the wing for three and it's good! With 5.39 to play, get crazy in the mud on senior day. One, three, one, two, three, four. Alex in the 30 and there he goes. He's going to score. Big, big play at the big point. Oh, the Razorbacks were all over. A terrific defense. To the house. Touchdown, Arkansas.